Today is going to be a very different video where there is someone who's moving overseas and I got word of this through forums and they're clearing out a whole storage shed of just various parts. It's PC parts, they've got some retro gaming stuff. But of course, as soon as I heard PC parts, I had to head on down and see what they had. Now, what I'm gonna be doing today is just going through the process with you guys on what I'm picking out as someone who does resell PCs. I'm gonna essentially be going through the cream of the crop in this storage shed, and I'm just gonna show you guys the whole thought process. And then in the end, we'll see what deals we come out with, and I guess see how much we could have potentially saved instead of going to the local market like Facebook, etc. So let's get straight into those deals and see what is cracker lacking at this storage shed. Are you tired of seeing this annoying activate Windows message? Then if so, today's video sponsor SCD Keys has you covered. For as little as $14 using the coupon code BFTYC, you can get activated today. Works for Windows 11 Pro too. Links in the description below. So this storage shed is just absolutely chock-a-block with so much stuff. Uh, we're in the process of just taking all the stuff out so I can just get a good look of it and see what you know see what's inside but so far i am getting into some of the stuff and as i go through these pcs i'll show you what i'm pulling out so the first thing we've got here that i was interested in was of course brand new cases still in the box now i asked them how they came into this stuff and they said there was a computer shop that closed down on the gold coast so they actually picked these up at sellout prices and so they're going to do them for me so what we're going to do right now is just put these cases to the side and we're going to start making the tech yes pile and continue on so the next deal we've got up here is a first gen it's got like a four gigabyte stick of memory the uh, cpu is an i5 650 so technically an i3 and the main thing i'm interested in here is actually the motherboard and the memory stick so of course i'll just offer them like something really you know low level because they're probably going to chuck it out anyway and then we've also got here a teddy bear but i'm not going to be taking the teddy bear <laughs> a used teddy bear that's been in storage for quite a while and i'm not too keen on that i'll take it so this right here is probably something I would have picked up back in the day, but nowadays it's just one of those things where you straight away see it's missing a 24 pin cable. And I actually don't have any modular 24 pin cables that would fit a Cougar power supply. And I actually haven't never come into one. So this is one of those things where I'm actually just gonna give it a miss simply because it's gonna take too much time to try and piece that thing together. And I mean, yeah, so some things you just miss based on time. And that's one of those things but what we're going to do now is move over to some of these older pcs uh there is like some of these i've already pulled them apart and they're just like they've got ddr2 inside so basically with ddr2 i don't know if you guys know but i've stopped uh i actually stopped a while ago with ddr2 pcs and the reason being with ddr2 is that it's just too old i came into simply way too many problems when i was reselling ddr2 pcs like literally like one in every two we just come back with problems and so the, again the time thing so reselling ddr2 pcs i'm really not into it but one thing that we can do with these old pcs is that they've got pcie wireless cards in them and of course wireless from the store is going to cost 15 bucks brand new and of course i deal with uh, first and second gen pcs so for me i'm pulling out these pcie wireless cards out of these old builds because i can use them in say a second gen i7 rig with like a gtx 770 or something and that's adding 15 dollars of value on for me which i'm basically picking it up for nothing here so the next one here is an antec case that looks pretty decent and then when looking inside we've actually got a semi-decent power supply and also an a p7 p55 motherboard so this motherboard's actually decent for a first generation motherboard so upon seeing this whole little package here i figured i'll take the whole thing because I'll be able to definitely piece out a budget rig with this right here. But this next one here is a Lenovo. I don't know if it's third or fourth gen, but it does have M2 wireless on it. So that's an indicator. It's probably fourth gen. And it does include the FSP power supply, which actually is really decent. So that'll power easily a 1050 Ti if I put an i7 in there. And um, since it's got the power supply, it's got the cooler, 
we're pretty much all good to go. We just make sure we pull out those temp sensors as well. So that's important and then we can recase that. And then this one right here was a P55, the Zeus motherboard. Pretty decent, so we're gonna take that. Now, one thing you can always look for is the uh, cooler indicates that since it's a really thin cooler, I'm guessing that this is probably like i3 or i5. So don't even need to pull the cooler off to tell that that's a low grade CPU. So pretty much just gonna be bartering on the motherboard here. And uh, in terms of RAM, it's got uh, two, two gigabyte sticks. So really not worth a whole lot. So we just finished up round one and it is time for round two. So we've gone through four PCs now. We've found two eight gigabyte sticks of memory. Uh, sorry, two four gigabyte sticks. And this one here is kind of like we struck, a, I wouldn't say gold, maybe more bronze. We've got a Z77 motherboard. Again, looking at that cooler, it looks like it is an i5 and 500 watt power supply. So we might as well just take the whole case as well because we might be able to do something with it. So let's keep the show going. halfway through actually probably over about halfway through this whole pile here yeah, it's summer too so it is pretty hot i am sweating like a dog yeah so so far we picked up a lot of ddr3 memory there is uh also wi-fi cards that i've been picking out as well as i found some z like 97 h77 h61 i've picked all those builds out and uh right here is actually we stopped midway because this one's right here is it's an old Pentium. I forgot which one this is, like just by looking at it, but I just know it's sort of a real older sort of um, Intel build and I'm not too sure. It's got DDR, is it DDR1 and 2? If any of you guys think this is an interesting um, sort of Intel Pentium build, let us know in the comments what this is. And because I, I, told, I told the person with this shed, I said, you might want to keep this. It might actually have some kind of collective collection value to it. have just finished up going through so many computers of course we've picked out the cream of the crop and then I just left those two computers there was two of those older Intel machines I just said they might want to check them out but then out here we've also got just a heap of PCs that we've also went through so there was just so many computers and basically what we did we agreed upon a half a G for all this stuff so let's go get over to the tech yes mobile and see what's in the cab and what we're taking home. So we're now back at the Tech Yes Studio with 10 PCs in total plus the motherboard that I pulled out here. And if I didn't do that, I wouldn't have actually fitted all this stuff in my car. As we also had those new cases too, but 
Of course, them being new cases, we don't really need to test anything and pull anything apart. But the main plan with these computers here today is to keep some of the cases that have clear side panels and also aren't too banged up. And then the others, I'll be pulling the motherboards out. But of course, that's if the stuff inside works properly. So I'm gonna be going through these PCs three at a time. And then if we come into any weird issues, We'll see what they are and see how we can fix them up. So this first PC here, unfortunately, it's pretty much a no-go completely. Uh, the case is damaged. The power supply let off a big pop when we first try to turn that on. And then after that, we did hook up a speaker to the motherboard just to see if there's any beep noises coming out. And what happened here was when we tried to boot this PC up, it's giving out six loud beeps. And it's saying, when you look at the diagnosis on the internet, saying that it's a CPU error. So we tried changing the CPU, we tried different RAM sticks, we even tried a different CMOS battery, and the board is still letting off a loud beep, which means that this, pretty much this whole thing here is toast. I'm guessing the power supply blew out and took the motherboard with it. But what we're gonna do is still uh, take the RAM sticks with us. We'll still take these RAM sticks with us and uh, the CPU that we pulled out of this, which was an i5-3470. So this first one is not looking too good. Looks like we got a bit of a hose job on the first PC. So this next uh, build right here is pretty much a similar story as the previous one, except we may be able to salvage the power supply. So we're gonna take that out, run it through a power supply checker, but this one will just boot up. There's no speaker signal coming out whatsoever. Try a different memory stick and tried a different CPU and it still just gives nothing. Like it's just booting and then it's pretty much frozen in that state where a good way to check if anything's coming out of this build will be also to um, check if the keyboard is lighting up. Say the numlock lights up your RGB mouse. If you've got an RGB mouse, that lights up, basically saying that it's it's booting. But this PC right here is just nothing is booting. It's it's another a dud motherboard, unfortunately. <laughs> so, so it's not looking good so far. It's definitely not looking good. So we've now hooked up a power supply tester and this is giving out some really decent figures. So the power supply seems to be okay. And worst, <laughs> worst case scenario, we can reuse this case since it's already got three LED fans installed and I've uh, just got to take that motherboard out. And so we've got a sort of the base of a gaming PC for a later date. So finally, we got some really good news. I was, <laughs> you probably would have heard me cursing from my place to your place if this one didn't work. But uh, what we did here was initially it didn't boot up properly. And then I um, took out one of the memory sticks and tried using just one memory stick and we we're getting a signal. But then I tried the other memory stick and it wasn't booting. So that means this memory stick right here is faulty and that was causing this PC not to work properly. So this is really good news. This is one of the best case scenarios when you've got a faulty PC because you can extract that value uh, by just obviously changing the memory stick. So one for three, that's uh, at least not too bad. I'm not feeling as hosed. And now we're two for four with this PC also having an SSD installed and what I had to do to get this one working was take the CMOS battery out, then also change the memory stick over where the included eight gigabyte stick looks like it was faulty. And so that's actually pretty good news. Again, as long as the motherboard and the power supply is working, then it's a pretty good trade-off. So this PC right here was a pretty good outcome in that we tried two different RAM sticks and the PC wouldn't boot, but then we tried a different power supply and the PC is booting absolutely fine, which means that this power supply right here is faulty. Since, since this case is also pretty banged up, we're just gonna remove the motherboard and the fan and the two sticks of RAM and we got a little bare bones kit right there. So this next PC here has no power supply, but also when we tried booting it up, it just pretty much shut off within the first three seconds. And then upon uh, changing the memory stick around, we've now got a signal. So that means we have yet again a faulty memory stick 
installed on the PC. So this is another really solid outcome, especially since these PCs right here, when it comes to fourth generation stuff, the motherboard's actually a really important piece. So this next PC that we got with an H81M motherboard, it has an i5-4460 inside. It didn't have any memory sticks and the power supply was really weird because the person initially didn't have the uh, eight pin or four pin hooked up. So I'm guessing whatever that deal happened here is someone was gonna build a gaming PC and just gave up because they couldn't get the power cable to work probably. But everything inside this build uh, works. So seems like we scored in the best way possible for this next one. So this one right here is a unfortunate result of, I would put it down to a bad power supply. I think this one right here is called an ABOMB. And that's um, that's unfortunate because this is what, when, when a lot of people say, oh, I get a decent power supply, this PC right here is, is a perfect example of why, where I think this power supply has caused this motherboard to fail over time. Uh, because it's just got such crap power coming out of it. Now, initially it just, it would turn off, it would start up, turn off, and then once we changed the power supply around, it actually gave us out a beep signal, like it was kind of booting normally, but then we got actually no keyboard uh, signal lighting up, which means that it just couldn't make it past post. So unfortunately this whole system here, we're gonna just take out the CPU. There was a RAM stick included, so we're just gonna take that stuff out and then since the case really isn't anything special, it's actually missing a side panel. We're just gonna add that to the dump pile. Also, we did try a different CMOS battery. Also tried flashing the BIOS on the Gigabyte motherboard where you can hold down the power button for 10 seconds or hold down the power and reset button depending on the model. So you can cycle through those things and try and get the backup BIOS to initiate. So this next one right here is a complete straight success story and this is the best outcome of course, this one right here, we are going to have to recase it. It is completely banged up, but when the power supply, motherboard, the included RAM stick, the cooler, everything works fine, and the fan's not making any crazy noises, this is one of the best outcomes. Of course, it's got an i3 in it, which is, I guess, why someone previously chucked it out, but with these, with these whole Acer systems, the second generation, they're really easy to recase because there's actually no proprietary connectors on them, and also we can just change the CPU over to something like an i5 second gen or i7. So this is the last of the case pools. Then after that, we got one motherboard to test, but this one right here actually didn't even have a CPU in it. So I'm just gonna pull out the power supply and the motherboard since the case is just totally trashed. And uh, we're just gonna see if we can put a CPU in and a RAM stick and get it to work. So this one here, all we needed to do was just quickly boot it up and see if the keyboard was lighting up, and it was. But I mean, a motherboard power supply and cooler isn't a bad thing. I mean, if I come into a 6700, for example, I can pop that into this motherboard, and these are pretty easy to get around in terms of recasing. I've already got the uh, front panel audio connector here, and also the front USB works normally like a standard ATX USB Type 2 connector. And this last one here just uh, powers on for like a second, then just powers straight off, which is indicative of a motherboard that's faulty. So uh, this is the last motherboard and it sucks that we came into this problem again. We've changed the battery on the CMOS. We have changed the RAM. So we've given this thing everything we can. It's time to wrap up the storage shed raid. So here's our trash pile here. And actually coming out of this, I'm not as happy as I was going in. I mean, we've got four faulty motherboards and of course the, going into this second and third generation motherboards are usually the most expensive thing in that series where the CPUs are really cheap and I actually come into a lot of CPUs and it's just the motherboards, you want them to work, but when they don't work, they just don't work. And you can spend a lot of time trying to get this stuff to work. And trust me, I've spent like days trying to get motherboards working sometimes. And you just, the amount of time that you're gonna put into it is definitely not worth the return. But over here is the finished pile. And we have come out of this with, I guess, enough stuff to, I would say, dare break even 
But again, it's this time around, it's more so the time that I spent going to the place, picking out all the stuff, especially during a really hot day, sweating like a dog. And uh, just what we're left with now is we still got to clean up a lot of this stuff and present it nicely. And so here we are now at crunch time. And what we saw today was my method of going through used parts with that whole 90% and then saving 80% of time. So in other words, if we were to put all that extra time in, we may get one of those four faulty motherboards working, but it's gonna take so much longer than the time that we already spent, which is half a day cleaning out that storage shed, then another half a day going through all the stuff and quickly testing it, see what works. And I think that we came out in the end with the stuff that's also gonna reliably work. Even if we get one of those motherboards working, how long is it going to last for? Because I generally find especially if the motherboards just keep booting up and off, they're generally at the end of their life cycle. So I came into this thinking I was in for a massive bargain. You guys probably feel the energy at the start of the video. Then I'm coming out feeling like, well, I kind of like, I'm okay. Like it's fair value, $500 Aussie dollars for everything we got in the end is okay. But I was kind of under the premise and I think the guy selling it also thought there was i7s in that stuff and I did not get one i7 out of that whole pick. So if I kind of saw the sticker on the build, this is one of the mistakes that I would correct personally next time I do meet someone and go through a storage shed like that, even though it's extremely rare, would be if there's an i7 on there and we both think there's an i7 in it, I'll actually just quickly take the CPU cooler off, double check there's an i7 and if there's not, then I can say budge down the whole bundle down a hundred bucks. Cause I feel like maybe the fair price on all this stuff was maybe 350 considering I had to outlay all that time and go through all the stuff. And in the end, it's gonna be okay because I can use a lot of this stuff in budget PCs, get my money back. But I am a little bit devo that if you guys didn't know, it's like devastated. That's short in Australian for devastated that uh, we didn't get any i7s. But in the end, we did get enough stuff working to piece out budget gaming systems. And the whole process here is, is that if you've got a power supply and a good power supply, like a decent one to test, and then you've got a RAM stick, and then you've got a power supply tester and also a spare CPU, you can pretty much get through a lot of the testing phase and also a little speaker as well. Don't forget the little speaker, they can give you out some important information. But if you've got these things, you can just quickly go through and see what works, what doesn't work, know if you've got a problem and know what it's going to be. So in some of the cases we had a faulty power supply, we knew the motherboard worked, the keyboard lit up, the speaker was going fine, giving out one beep. And then in other cases we just had that, like that gigabyte one at the start where it's just six beeps telling us there's a CPU error, we've changed the CPU over, changed the power supply over, changed the RAM, and the motherboard's still giving out that noise. So the motherboard's faulty and we don't have to waste any more time on it, we don't have to try and diagnose it we just know that the motherboard's faulty and so we're moving through this stuff pretty quickly and at the end of the day if you guys watch this stuff and you pick up some tips and you're sort of recycling this stuff getting value then you're doing a really good job you know you're going to be helping yourself in the process too but again i got to just wipe that wipe that negative energy out and uh, stay positive so kind of in the end you win some you lose some i think i i kind of lost here a little bit today but I do like to show everything here at Tech yes City on the channel. I like to show that if you're getting into used PC parts, there's gonna be those big victories where you're just ecstatic, everything works, you've got some i7s in there, that would have been the best case scenario here today. 11 motherboards, we had a couple of i7s, I would have been over the moon, but it wasn't the case. Four faulty out of 11 motherboards, so we had seven working. Got a couple of power supplies in there, some cases that we gotta clean up, and no i7s. Uh, also, I've still got to go through a heap of the memory. So even though we pulled out some memory from some of the other builds that we weren't picking up, there was a lot of memory that we pulled out of the builds that were working in the end. So I will go over those separately at a later date. We also managed to pull out all those Wi-Fi cards. So that's going to add some value on. So every little chance you can get, if you know there's value in something, don't throw it out, take out the stuff that's worth value. And so that's what we were doing here today. We're pulling out all the stuff that was worth value and just leaving all the old stuff behind, especially the DDR2 stuff. I don't think anyone's interested in DDR2, especially in a gaming PC. For Office PCs, it's okay, but even for Office PCs, my luck with a lot of that old DDR2 stuff, it's just a lot of headaches. I mean, we had the DDR3 stuff here 
and even had four out of 11 boards faulty, I could only imagine if I picked out some of that DDR2 stuff, I would imagine that probably over half of it would have been faulty. So again, way more wasted time that you need and time is money when it comes to reflipping PCs and adding value. Anyway guys, with that aside, do let us know in the comment section below, what was your favorite pick here today for all this massive storage shed raid. Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always, just like this question of the day here, which comes from N2 Tech, and they ask, being in somewhat of a closed system, have you ever sold a GPU and months to years later buy it back in a deal and recognize it's one of the ones you sold? And so when it comes to selling GPUs, actually in the last year and a half, I don't think I've sold individually any GPUs. I'm in a GPU drought right now where I'm actually always trying to get GPUs to put in gaming PCs. But if I'm in an abundance of GPUs, I do sell them separately and I haven't actually had one GPU come back that I've sold separately. But in terms of gaming PCs, I have had quite a few times a gaming PC that I've sold and then the person who's bought it's actually sold it onto someone else. And then that person's come to me, traded the gaming PC in because they want something higher end. And then I've noticed I'm like, this is my gaming PC that I sold a while ago. <laughs> and I'm kind of happy because it's like, wow, that gaming PC still works absolutely fine years later. So it is a testament to the used stuff. And if you put good stuff in there and you stress test it properly, you get a lot of life out of this stuff. But the more common one is just me selling gaming PCs and then people trading them in who's bought off me before because they want to upgrade to a higher end system. And so that's usually when I see the GPUs specifically I usually see them come back here to Tech Yes City. Anyhow, hope that answers that question. If you guys have stayed this far and you're enjoying that Tech Yes content, be sure to hit that like button for us. And also if you wanna see the content as soon as it drops, be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell. And if you want some behind the scenes access, then for as little as a dollar a month, you can join and become a member. And with that aside, I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.